Hi, and welcome to So Many Books, So Little Time podcast. My name is Jody Stapler. I'm an owner of a publishing company called Willow Moon Publishing, a podcaster, a voiceover artist, and an author. Stories are so important in our lives. And there are so many out there from independent authors and independent publishing companies that we may never find unless we trip over them on accident. So I started this podcast for people who love books and love to read and to help bring more awareness to the indie books and authors of our time. So stay with me for so many books, so little time. I am speaking with Rhea McCurgy. She is an author of both fiction and nonfiction. She has co-founded the Bangalore Writers Workshop in 2012, and she currently co-runs Write Leela Write, a design and content laboratory in Bangalore. And we are going to be talking to her about her debut novel, The Body Myth. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining me all the way from India. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so tell us a little bit more about yourself. I know I read a whole bunch there, but there's more <laughs> about you, I know. Well, yes, I um, actually kind of grew up between the U.S. and India. I was actually born in the U.S. Um, and I kind of uh, fi finished elementary school there. And then I did high school uh, in India and uh, then went back for college and my master's degree in the U.S. And I'm finally I've been back in India now for seven years. So wow. yeah, okay. So that must have been a huge um, culture shock after have like being in America yes. for elementary school because I've been to India and uh -huh. um, that it was it's there's a lot of people. Yes, it's, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart for sure. Yeah. Uh, but it, um, it's a lot. It's a sensory overload, India. Yes, um, it's part of the reason I actually like it, but I also can understand for a lot of people coming in, it's 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 a huge culture shock. Um, and so I actually had culture shock when I came to India um, and then integrated with the schooling system. But then I also had reverse culture shock when I went back as an 18 year old back to the US oh, um, yeah. and went back to college life. So I kind of experienced it um, on both sides. It's given me a lot of perspective. It was hard, but I'm actually very grateful for it. Right. Well, I'll tell you, um, and I've said this before on the podcast, um, I loved India, every part of it. We started in Rajasthan and we made oh, wow. a loop around the whole country for about three weeks and ended up in New Delhi and um, like we everywhere. We toured the entire country and wow. honestly, it is, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I recommend it to anybody. It's definitely a different culture than America, but it's probably one of my favorite places I've ever traveled to because of that. That's so many colors, so many smells. Wow. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, so now what part, first of all, what part are you in? You're in Bangalore. I'm in Bangalore. So we're down south. Uh, we're in the state of Karnataka. And so that's the, cap okay. the capital of the state of Karnataka. So yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's kind of like the, um, well, it's called the IT city or the Silicon Valley of Asia, because there's a bunch of startups here. And there's a lot of um, IT, uh, the IT industry kind of really, really thrives over here. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the body myth. Okay. So yes. this story is not for, uh, I'm going to, I don't, I guess I want to say the faint, not for the faint of heart. I think <laughs> you just used that for someone, another, I, someone's, one of us said it a few minutes ago, but it yeah, popped in my head again. Um, Mira, it's about Mira, who is a widowed teacher and she, you know, she's very young. She was only married for a short amount of time before her husband yeah. passed away. And she meets a woman and her husband in the park. Um, she she witnesses the woman having a having a seizure. She goes over and she becomes very close with this couple. Um, it's an interesting story because love relationships happen between Mira and the the man, the the husband Rahi, Rahil. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. also and also with Sarah, the wife, but not together separately nope. <laughs> <laughs> right so it it is it's like a book that deals with polyamorous relationships 
Um, but it also deals with Sarah's physical and mental health because she's having body issues with seizures and she's been diagnosed with all these things, but it's also mentally and, and more about mm -hmm. really like from the very beginning questioning is, is she really sick or is this all just a mental issue in mm -hmm. her that she feels she's sick? Where did you come up with this whole story? My <laughs> gosh. <laughs> well, I so I've been so I've always been fascinated um, with um, uh, you know the way we are you know um, it, it, talking about mental health. Um, I was in my in my past life I was a social worker and I worked in mental health, um, and then you know and and I do um, I myself kind of uh, suffer from very um, mild but consistent depression. Um, okay. So it's it's always been a fascinating topic for me because I think as we're establishing this conversation of mental health, where where there's a lot of labels going on, um, and you know there's a lot of identity kind of shopping that also happens when we are when we're working with all these kind of manifestations, and I think there's this huge link between um, the way uh, you know. The, the, in the way we respond to the world, that sometimes um, what we call psychosomatic is, I mean, psychosomatic just sounds so dismissive, like, oh, it's all in yeah. your head. But people who have psychosomatic issues actually feel that pain. So I, I don't right. know, I feel like that is so, that is so compelling to me. You know, uh, even when you look into the medical industry, people are, um, you know, there, there's, they say that there's the placebo effect and then there's a certain percentage of people um, that are cured or feel better because of the placebo effect. Um, and again, that also sounds pretty dismissive. But what is the placebo effect? So is there this connection with the way we think and how we present, um, you know, physically? Um, that I think that was something that I was really trying to search for when I was writing this book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, you know, I, I'll admit I have uh, depression issues myself um, and have for many, many years. And so I, I totally mm -hmm. understand that. Um, people who don't suffer with it do not understand that when you are having a bout of depression, it's not just a mental thing or an emotional thing. It is your entire mm -hmm. body. And Absolutely. yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's, I think it's great that you're getting that out there. And the more people talk about it, the better. Um, I, I'm not sure if this, I should even say this is probably too personal, but you know, um, uh, a few years ago, I did have some issues where I was mm -hmm. very suicidal and I went to a doctor and said, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm having issues. And he said to me, well, you look fine to me. And even mm -hmm. like, so that's my point was even, even medical professionals don't understand mm -hmm. mental health. Like he just, well, you look like you, you can talk well, you're intelligent, you're, you look fine, you're going to be fine. And I think wow. more of right. us need to talk about these things that, right. you know, otherwise people that are having these problems don't know that there are other people out there like them. Exactly. Yeah, I absolutely 100% agree with that. Um, and I find that, well, that's really surprising that a doctor could have said that, but it's, it right? is the truth. I think it, we are, I know it's so surprising when you hear about it as an incident, um, it sounds like no way that couldn't have really happened, but it does happen. And I think especially with women and, you know, especially with women, um, when it comes to these things, it is, it is talked down to a lot. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't know how, I mean, I do think that a lot of people are talking about it now and we are writing about it. Yeah. Um, and that's really important in negotiating this. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, the, the character Sarah was, you know, kind of man is manifesting a lot of things that are maybe physical, but also very much uh, inside her head and as a response to the world or, um, the thought of her not belonging to the world um, and then, you know, therefore rejecting it with illness. Yeah. Well, and it's it's not only about mental health, though. It's also about um, the relationships between Mira and both mm -hmm. the husband and the wife, Rahil and Sarah, and yes. really like their freedom to choose and there's romance and yet at the same point while you're list of like while I was reading it I'm thinking oh like I'm hurting for the other spouse 
And it, it really right. is just a, you're torn as you're reading it. Right. Um, I mean, I think when um, I was writing this, um, you know, Mira kind of being fascinated and then and then, you know, consequently also falling in love with Sarah, um, it, it, it was like she was trying to find everything that Sarah stood for. And I think it was in a natural outcome for her to also have a separate relationship with Rahil. Um, at least that was how it was, you know, uh, happened in my yeah. book. I didn't. I, I, I did think this was going to happen. I, I had planned it out when I was writing it. But the seamlessness of it, um, you know, really came through uh, because of Sarah. And I feel like sometimes, you know, when you're when you're falling in love with the person, um, you, you kind of adapt to everything um, about that person. Or, you, you know, you see the world with a different lens. And in this case, I think uh, Mira was negotiating what you know, love really is and how it can be, um, you know, a ma you know, manifest in, in so many different ways and not just through a monogamous relationship, especially given since that her very traditional expectations from a monogamous marriage was kind of like ripped apart in her face because of death. And mm. I think this is also a response to grief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, it was honestly, it's, it was kind of, like I said, I was torn as I was reading it. I wanted them all to be happy. But at the same point, mm -hmm. there was this whole idea of um, infidelity. And yeah. and so it, it, it really did tear at me. Like I, I wanted that. I wanted to like them all. But at the same point, I had a hard time doing it because you're ingrained in your mind as from a from being born that it's not OK to 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 cheat right. on a spouse or whatever. Yeah. Right. And I think that's a, I mean, that's a great uh, thought that you brought up because I mean, I, I obviously also was brought up with that and yeah. uh, with that notion and, and I still stick to it in my own life. Like I have, I have been a serial monogamist for all practical purposes, but it does, it makes me think, um, you know, the way we label our relationships that because from one lover, you can never get everything right so there's a person right. that you go to to give a certain kind of you know maybe some kind of gossip and the way you guys gossip is completely different from the way you gossip with your spouse or right. uh you know you talk about books to somebody and you have a special bond with them and so there, there are these different facets that somehow can't be you know we call them friendships but uh sometimes they can you know they can be a love they can be love but in a very different way it's just you know, uh, we don't, as a society, we're not structured yet for um, a seamless kind of merging of that yet. And um, I know there are communities that absolutely embrace this. Um, so I think for Mira, Mira is coming from a very uh, heterosexual actually point of view and actually from a very heteronormative point of view. But she she kind of gets um, very naturally um, moved into this into this, you know, this slightly bizarre situation. I will give you that. Um, yeah. <laughs> and at first, it starts starts with it starts with infidelity, um, absolutely. And at some point, there is some kind of negotiation within the three of them, where there is this, um, in, you know, this knowing um, that three of them have a special relationship with each other in their own way. Yeah. And of course, that is what builds a lot of tension, which is, I, which I believe is a natural outcome, especially in a society right. where yeah. we're taught to be jealous, where we're taught to, you know, to have these boundaries around certain relationships. And so what is the natural outcome of people who want to, you know, um, love people in different ways and have relationships with more than one person when you're living in a society um, that doesn't make it make this very easy when you're brought up on thoughts and values that are, um, you know, so very different. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it definitely an interesting read and it's getting a lot of great reviews on Goodreads and Amazon and everywhere. Um, so where can people find your book and will you, are you planning on coming to the U S for any book signings? So I'm actually, uh, I am coming to the U.S. Um, later on this month. So I will be, I'm going to be doing mainly the ma the West Coast. So I'm going to be in Denver okay. and then Portland, Oregon, and then uh, San Francisco and L.A. Wow, and, nice. And um, so, yeah, so I'm 
we'll be posting that on my website pretty soon, um, the dates. But they're all at the end of March and the first few days of April. So oh, I'm, that's not I'm that very, far very away. excited about that. No, yeah. yeah, I'm just leaving in like a couple of weeks from India. So yeah, nice. We're getting nice. ready to do that. And yeah. um, apart from that, I think my uh, books should be everywhere. And my publishers are encouraging everyone to ask their local bookstores for them. Um, so I know that, uh, you know, Unnamed Press does a lot of uh, good networking with a lot of the independent bookstores. So um, I obviously encourage people to go to the, their local bookstores to get it. But of course, it is also available online. And yeah. it's been uh, just a week. So I'm really, it's just been a week since it's been released. So I am... Um, I'm, I'm first of all really excited to see the reviews that are coming in and and how different people's viewpoints are in terms of what they take away from the book. It's been um, you know uh, not as consistent as I would have thought. So that's mm -hmm. interesting to me. I think when you're when you write a book and then you see the responses from people and there there are things that you never even thought about and then you know people are making a point yeah. of it. So that's yeah. always fascinating. That, you know, that's exciting that, you know, people are taking it and and making it their own, whereas, you know, you it's it's kind of like, I don't know, it's no longer your baby. It's it's out to everybody else. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the uh, one thing that I'm really getting as a perspective. And I've been writing for a few years now, um, but uh, and, you know, putting them out there in literary magazines and publishing there. But when you get a book out there. It's a different ball game, and I'm just starting to realize that it's it's out of your control now, completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, you dream about this day that your debut novel comes out, and and then you realize there's also a, there's a, a sense of loss of control that you have to embrace. And I think that's a very personal, interesting moment to like, which which is happening right now. But yeah. I think maybe a lot of other writers can relate to that. Right now, how are how's it? Um... How's it being taken in India? Are people enjoying it? Because I know um, a couple years, I guess it's maybe a year or two ago, there was a, a big court case with homosexuality and things like that over in India. And how, so yes. how do people take that over, over there? Well, right now, especially in urban India, there, the, when we, we just last year we had a uh, we decriminalized Section 377, which made homosexuality illegal. It was an old British law that um, you know people kept because society was still conservative. And finally, the LGBTQI um, community really you know pushed for this and yeah. had a huge victory last year. Um, so that so that has actually got. Um, the LGBTQ rights into the into the collective consciousness of India, which yes. was not really there. Like I think a lot of the middle class also had to finally acknowledge it and discuss it, even you know just even on a newspaper newspaper level. Um, these were things that were not openly discussed in families, and now they kind of had to be because it's right there. So I'm I'm hearing a lot of positive stories. There's a lot of work to be done, of course, and as yeah. I, I mean. Obviously, globally, but then in India has its own kind of different cultural uh, issues to be looked at. And um, and then again, as you know, since you've been to India, India is many countries in one country, uh, right. from language to food to, you know, just everything. It, it's so diverse from state to state um, yeah. that, you know, it lends itself to different kind of cultural understanding. So I guess... Um, I'm looking forward to how this is received in India. This is right now a U U.S. release, but um, right. I I do have um, I'm hoping to have some very good news about um, an Indian publisher in India uh, coming out in a few months. So um, that's when it's going to really hit the stands in India. And, yeah, well, good uh, luck with I that. Think, and yeah, yeah. I think it's an important um, book to get out there. Absolutely, yes. Thank you so much. I'm so glad yes. you feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, yeah, it's it's such a shame that all over worldwide, but um, in India, that things are not as accepted as they should be. Um, and so I do. I'm I'm happy that you're bringing this story out, and hope that someone in India picks it up. Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope so too. Yeah. So before we get going, I do want to mention you also have, which is nothing to do with your story, uh, but you have uh, a blog called Messy Messy Cooking Always Vegan. And I do. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is also on your website. And um, so tell yeah. me a little bit about that. Um, I grew up eating everything. And I, I only make that uh, a point because there are a, a good section, maybe 20 to 30 percent of India is uh, culturally vegetarian. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, I grew up in a family that ate meat and dairy and everything. And uh, I think when I was uh, a teenager, I, I, I you know, I, I, I had this whole thing about animals and I didn't want to Eat, eat them, but I did anyway. And then I think in my tw- when I moved to San Francisco for grad school, that's like the easiest place to be vegetarian. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, like the easiest. Um, in fact, now I'm learning it was probably the easiest place to be vegan as well. But but I only mm. became vegan when I when I moved to India. Uh, so yeah, but uh, so it's just been a little bit of a transitional journey for me over the years. And in 2016, I went vegan, and then there is a small vegan community, uh, you know, starting in India, especially in the urban sectors. And so there's a lot of discussions around that too. So I'm kind of actively involved in that. Um, and I, I like to blog. I, I love to cook, and I love to share um, all kinds of things and recreating, uh, you know, old uh, recipes um, with vegan ingredients, and then a lot of baking. Oh, I love that. So where, where, what is your website so that people can find out about The Body Myth, your other books, um, everything that you're involved in, and even your blog? So uh, so you, if you go to my website, everything's on there, including the links to my blog. So it's uh, riamukherjee.com. And, um, you know, the, the spelling of my name has two E's. It's R-H-E-E-A and Mukherjee, M-U-K-H-E-R-J-E-E. Okay, and I will put a link to that in my show notes so everybody can go there to find that. Um, I want to thank you so much for writing this book. And honestly, for being a female that is uh, strong and starting things like the Bangalore Writers Workshop and your uh, design and content laboratory and all of that, you're just, you're such an inspiration for so many women and young girls. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful for your comment. Thank you so much. Yes, absolutely. I really enjoyed the book. As I said, it was tore at me um, at one point because, like I said, you know, you're raised to not believe in infidelity, Mm -hmm. but polyamorous relationships are, you know, they're becoming more popular. And, you know, so it it was a struggle for me, but also the mental health aspect, I think, was such a great part of the book. And I, I hope that people read it for that aspect alone, if anything else. Thank you. So thank you so much for joining me today. Everybody go out and get The Body Myth. Uh, It's an awesome book by Rhea McCurgy. And um, thank you so much. Thank you, Jody. It was wonderful talking to you. It was nice talking to you. Bye-bye. I want to thank Rhea McCurgy for joining me today and telling us all about her novel, The Body Myth. And I want to thank you for joining me on So Many Books, So Little Time. Let me know what books you're reading, what authors I should interview, and give me your suggestions and comments. If you appreciate our podcasts, books, music, and our goal of helping others fulfill their artistic career dreams and would like to see it continue for many years to come, please join our Patreon and become a sponsor at Willow Moon Publishing. Make sure you subscribe to So Many Books, So Little Time podcast so that others can find me and all the great indie books and authors that I'll be sharing throughout this podcast. You can join me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at So Many Books, So Little Time Podcast. And you can check my website out at jodystapler.com or email us at so many books podcast at gmail.com. Thank you for joining me and come back next week when we delve into another story.